continuamos aquí en este Bingex Stage, donde no estamos parando, tenemos una ponencia, una mesa redonda detrás de la otra desde esta mañana que hemos comenzado en esta primera jornada de Merch Madrid aquí en el Palacio Cibeles. Un lugar de encuentro donde la tecnología se está fusionando con la cultura, el arte y estamos tocando muchas, eh, muchos temas, muchas de ponencias tratando de blockchain, web3, inteligencia artificial y arte en muchas de sus vertientes. Hemos tenido la industria cinematográfica, industria musical, hemos tenido el deporte y ahora continuamos con una charla informal que va a tratar sobre el ecosistema de, de pagos. Esta ponencia va a realizarse en inglés bajo el tema Building a Payment Ecosystem for the 21st Century, a first chat with PayPal. One of the biggest ones uh, to make payments worldwide. So we're going to discover how PayPal is driving the future of payments by integrating new global financial ecosystem. And for that, I'm going to welcome to the stage Jose Fernandez da Ponte, SVP Blockchain, Crypto and Digital Currencies, PayPal, and moderating Daniel Marin, co-founder co La Familia in Solana, Spain. So, it is my pleasure to welcome you here. The stage is yours. Enjoy the farcha. Hey, hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us today uh, and taking the time to hear us out. Um, I was planning on doing an intro of Jose, but she made already a really good intro. So. Let's see if we just go ahead and start with some of the really cool questions that we have for Jose today. So, um, Jose, to start, um, what would you say was the motivation to launch PyUSD? What, what made you PayPal launch it? What's the, the reason behind it? Sure. Uh, for those of you who, it's two seconds on PayPal, obviously we're a very large fintech. We process more than one trillion in, in online payments every year. Uh, headquarters in San Jose, that's where I, where I live, though I live in Madrid for 20 years, so it's fantastic to be back, back home. Uh, and the reason that PayPal has been involved in crypto and digital currencies for the last five years. Uh, I rejoined PayPal a few years back to take care of that, and we have been doing everything from Bitcoin and Ethereum on the PayPal wallet, the Venmo wallet and the like, to stable coins, to central bank digital currencies. And the reason that PayPal is involved in, in digital currencies is because we are a payments company. Uh, as a company, we don't have laser eyes. We are not Bitcoin maxis. There are some folks in my team who are definitely Bitcoin maxis. Uh, but the idea that, that the reason that we are uh, there is because we think that is probably for the first time in one generation is the first technology that I've seen that has the potential to become uh, the next generation of payment rails. So if you are a payments company, Blockchain technologies are too important for you not to have a chip in the race and a horse in the race. So we started gradually a few years back, uh, as I said, enabling Bitcoin and Ethereum and a couple of other tokens on the PayPal wallet and then on the Venmo wallet and then going international. And we launched the stablecoin uh, in the summer of 2023, about a year ago, first on the Ethereum blockchain. We recently deployed on Solana. We announced that in June this year uh, and generally The numbers for the stablecoin, this is all public information, is about 700 million in assets under management. It's about 5 billion in monthly on-chain transfer volume. So the reason that we launch it, we do think that as an instrument for exchange, stablecoins are one of the killer applications of blockchain so far. We thought a lot about whether we should deploy our own or adopt one of those that are already out there. We, we care a lot about regulation and we care a lot about the technology and the infrastructure of it. So we, in the end, we decided that we needed to do our own work. Our stable coin is issued in the US. It's issued by a company called Paxos out of New York. Uh, Paxos is a limited purpose trust, very heavily regulated in New York. And we wanted to make sure that it was well regulated, transparent, bankruptcy remote. And when we look around and we look at the ecosystem, we decided that there was a, a space in the market for something like, like our chain. 
we are definitely very interested in that being used for payments. Uh, the preeminent use case today, on the one side, is very used in crypto markets. If you look at the places where you can get the stable coin, it is available in 25, uh, I think it's up to 30 exchanges now. You can get it on most of the Ethereum and, and Solana wallets. It's important to know you don't need a PayPal account to interact with our stablecoin. It was very important for us that it was from the very beginning built on permissionless protocols. And we believe that from the PayPal point of view, if you think of the stack as blockchain protocol, application and UX, we play on the application and UX side. We, don't want to, we didn't want to have a PayPal blockchain or a PayPal DeFi protocol. We wanted to make sure that we are available in the places where developers want to build. Ethereum was the very logical first chain to deploy. Solana was the very logical second chain to deploy, given our uh, use case. And we will be deploying on additional chains. Awesome. Um, can you give us uh, like a, a, a few pointers on what are the good things about Solana that made you choose Solana for your second uh, chain? Yeah, so if you're involved in payments, you want to do retail payments. You need to be able to do about at least the low bar is 1,000 transactions per second. There are not that many protocols out there, layer one or layer two, that can sustain uh, thousands. In, in most cases, you, you're going to be able to sustain hundreds, but not thousands. So definitely throughput and scalability was, was an advantage of Solana. But when we evaluate chains to deploy on, we look at, we look at the technology, we look at the regulation, we look at the ecosystem, and we look at the payment primitives. So when we, do, when we analyze that for Solana or for any other chain, the scalability and the TPS was important. The fact that I, I, our regulator, the New York Department of Financial Services, was comfortable with the stablecoin being deployed on Solana was important. The community and the developer ecosystem around Solana was important too. And there are many of the features that Solana has enabled through token extensions that are very highly relevant for payments. So if you're thinking of payment delegation, you're thinking of uh, confidential transfers. There are a number of things in which, when you're on the payment side, sometimes in a blockchain environment, it is people mistake a transaction with a payment. And when I mean transaction, it's just moving money from a wallet to another wallet. When you're doing that for payments, there is a bunch of other things that you need to do. You need to make sure that merchants are uh, not making information they don't want to make available on chain. You want to make sure that you can process refunds and, and the equivalent to chargebacks in, in credit cards. You, want to, you, you need to be able to make the receiver pay, not the sender pay. So all those are features that are deployed that you can get working through token extensions. Uh, you can do it on some other chains as well, but definitely for Solana, it was a big driver of us choosing to deploy there. Thank you, Jose. And, um, you know, I, I'm super interested. So how is uh, PayPal uh, integrating PyUSD within its current network? How is it looking? What, what are the products that we can see PyUSD in the future? Yeah, so we, it's a two-pronged effort. On the one side, we want to make sure that it's very available in the, in the ecosystem. So you can find PyUSD today. You can buy it on Coinbase, on Kraken, on most of the international exchanges. OKX listed the stablecoin last week. So we want to be where crypto adopters are. And that means that you can get it in, in Solana wallets. You can get it on Phantom. It's supported on, on Metamax. So it's important for us that a, a, the stablecoin is available and present everywhere that crypto users are there. It's very widely used on the DeFi ecosystem. I think it's a very good example for Solana. It's very, very present in the, in the DeFi ecosystem over there. But we also believe that the uniqueness of our stablecoin comes from the connectivity with the PayPal side. PayPal has more than 400 million uh, consumer accounts and more than 40 million merchants. So if you're interested in getting access to that user base, the canonical stablecoin for the PayPal ecosystem, not only the canonical, the only stablecoin supported inside the PayPal ecosystem is ours. So it was important. If you want to combine something that is crypto native, where we're not trying to tell the ecosystem where to work, we are meeting the ecosystem where it is, with very clear and seamless connectivity between fiat and crypto and access to our consumer, our merchant ecosystem, that is what we are the most interested in. So you're going to see it more and more deployed on, on PayPal products. It is available today on the PayPal wallet in the US. 
and on the Venmo wallet, Venmo is our P2P uh, brand for the, for the US. You're gonna see that I also have the privilege of running uh, Zoom, which is the remittance business on the PayPal side. So you can today, you can fund remittances in, in, uh, in our stablecoin with no transaction fees, which means that if you're in the US, you're sending money to support your family in Mexico and you decide to fund that in our stablecoin, you're not gonna pay any transaction fee and your family member will still receive pesos in their bank account in, in, in Mexico. And you will see more and more of, of that. We very recently enabled that for business accounts in the US, meaning that millions of merchants in the US who use PayPal or who have a PayPal account, now they, have, they can hold their, their stablecoin with us. And we will continue to deploy that in additional use cases in the next months. So it seems there's a bright future, a bright future coming ahead. So uh, I, my, my, like a short question for the builders. I'm a developer, so I'm wondering what are the killer apps that PayPal is looking forward to see uh, being born out of this uh, new um, venture. So when you talk about stable coins and payments, people naturally go. The, the initial question is. When do you think that consumers are gonna be using stablecoins to pay on e-commerce? I don't think that retail e-commerce is the first use case that, that you will see, especially in markets like the US or Europe where there is a ton of penetration of credit cards and wallets like PayPal and Bizum and others. I don't know that there is a, a, a high demand for consumers to pay in a stablecoin. What I do think that is gonna happen first is definitely on cross-border payments, either peer-to-peer -peer like remittances or B2C with consumers in places like Latin America or Southeast Asia who don't have an international credit card but they want to buy from a merchant in the US or, or in Europe. And especially I think it's gonna happen on, on B2B payments. There is a very, very clear demand from companies who are moving money cross borders. Today they need to do wire transfers, spend, wait for five days to get their money on the other side and pay exorbitant uh, FX fees. And we're seeing a ton of appetite for that and for enterprise use cases. So vendor payments, repatriation of funds, uh, treasury management. We literally last week, we announced that our stable coin, that we are starting to pay our vendors in stable coin uh, through the SAP Digital Currency Hub. So the SAP Digital Currency Hub will be supporting our stable coin. We do think, and we have been saying this for a while, that the first client of a stable coin on the, on the payments space is the CFO, both of an SMB and an enterprise. And many of the use cases are gonna be fiat on the front and a stable coin on the back so that you don't need to convince the consumer to go through all the comprehension issues to start using stable coins. Thank you. Um, yeah, we're out of time, but thank you so much for uh, these awesome answers and giving us a chance to learn more about the PayPal ecosystem. I'm super excited to see what's coming in the future and hopefully to see builders coming from Spain uh, making the rails for the future of, of you know, uh, stable coin adoption and, and the growth of our, our, our beautiful ecosystem. Thank you so much, Daniel, and thank you to the Merge folks for getting the community together, and thank you so much for listening to us. Thanks. Hemos creado una comunidad orgánica y hemos sentado las bases para hacer que España sea un centro blockchain a nivel europeo. Millones de personas visitan España todos los años. Y de estas personas, más del 80% vuelven. Eso se puede ver a muchas cosas. Puede ser por su maravillosa cultura, por su deliciosa gastronomía, la pasión de su gente o incluso su estilo de vida único. España no es solo turismo, España tiene mucho más que ofrecer. Respecto a la tecnología blockchain, ya España se sitúa en el top de Europa Occidental. Cada vez más son las empresas y emprendedores que ponen su foco en este sector. Y es que Solana no es una blockchain más. Gracias a su estructura, podemos utilizar sus aplicaciones en el día a día. Hemos hecho colaboraciones con universidades y academias locales, Hemos hecho talleres y cursos de desarrollo blockchain en español. Algo muy notorio ya si vemos que cada vez más son los proyectos de Solana que nacen aquí en la nación. Nos estamos enfocando mucho en lo que viene siendo la educación, la adopción y sobre todo en crear una comunidad de Solana alineada con los valores y la cultura local. Es que Solana más que una comunidad, 
somos la familia. La familia. Somos 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 la familia.